Here in the last three years or so, I've really spent a lot of time searching for the perfect keyboard and mouse, mainly to reduce strain and fatigue, especially on my wrist. I've really been looking for more ergonomic keyboards especially, and mice as well. And one of the best purchases I ever made was the Ergodox Easy Keyboard from ZSA. If I go to my web browser here, I'll show you a quick picture of the Ergodox Easy. It's the split keyboard. Uh, they come in two different colors, white and black. I actually purchased the black variant of it if I switch to my desktop here. This is the Ergodox Easy. This is the one I purchased two and a half years ago, and I've been using that keyboard ever since. That's actually the keyboard I use for my home computer. Now, earlier this year in 2021, I was moving into this office and I knew I paid rent to move in on May 1st. So in April of 2021, I didn't want to get into this office and not have one of these split keyboards for the office as well because I didn't want to have to take my ErgoDox easy to my home computer and then to the office computer. I had to take it with me every day. So I wanted to buy a second split keyboard from ZSA. And originally I thought I would just buy another ErgoDox Easy. And then I realized that ZSA also has this new keyboard, a newer keyboard than the ErgoDox, a newer design called the Moonlander Mark I. So I thought, you know what? I'll buy the Moonlander for the office. I'll keep the ErgoDox Easy at home. And that's what I've done. This is actually the black variant of the Moonlander Mark one. Anytime you guys see me doing videos in the office, I'm typing on a keyboard, I'm doing it on the Moonlander Mark 1. Anytime you guys see me doing anything from home on a keyboard, I'm doing that on the ErgoDox Easy. Now I've done a couple of videos on both the ErgoDox and the Moonlander in the past. I did unboxing videos on both keyboards when I first purchased them. But people want to know how I'm getting along with them because I haven't really done any kind of a revisit, you know, on what my thoughts are having spent you know, about six, seven months now with the Moonlander and about two and a half years with the ErgoDox. And my thoughts on it is I love these keyboards. I could never go back to using a normal keyboard again. There's just so many advantages. Now, in my opinion, the biggest advantage of using these split keyboards is the fact that they are split keyboards. If I switch back to my desktop and I've got the Moonlander in front of me, what is the advantage of the split design versus your standard keyboard that's not split. Well, split keyboards allow you to position each half of the keyboard where it makes sense for you, you know, depending on really your size, your frame. Typically, the best placement for a keyboard, as far as these split keyboards, would be going about a shoulder width apart. Because when you're shoulder width apart, you know, your hands are out like this, it really opens your chest up and really forces you to have correct posture. It makes you much more relaxed as far as posture where on a standard keyboard where all the keys are kind of close together and of course your hands are close together you naturally kind of lean into it and you're naturally kind of hunched over that keyboard and for prolonged work at a keyboard that is not a healthy posture so by far the biggest advantage of these keyboards and even if this was the only advantage of this keyboard this would be the reason i purchased this keyboard is because of the split design Another really big advantage with these keyboards is the fact that they have a ortholinear design. Now, what is ortholinear? An ortholinear keyboard is a keyboard with an ortholinear or a straight layout, meaning all the keys line up exactly, you know, vertically and horizontally. If I actually, let me pull up another keyboard from ZSA. ZSA makes a small little keyboard here called the Plank. I actually don't own the Plank. I would love to purchase one at some point if I ever do. I will take a look at it on the channel, but you guys can see what ortholinear means. All the keys line up exactly vertically and exactly horizontally. That is ortholinear. Now the ErgoDox Easy and the Moonlander Mark I are not strictly ortholinear. They're more what uh, ZSA refers to as columnar because they're only ortholinear in the vertical position, not in the horizontal position. If I switch back over to my desktop, you can see the keys line up perfectly vertically, just straight vertical lines. But horizontally, there is a little bit of a difference there. It's not straight across, right? So that is the difference between ortholinear and columnar. But honestly, when we're talking about being ortholinear, the most important ortholinear uh, aspect is that vertical aspect, because it never made sense. If you actually take a look at a standard 110 key keyboard, 
For example, take ASDF on the home row of a keyboard, and then the keys directly above it are not actually directly above it. Q, W, E, and R, which you would use the, the same fingers, A, S, D, F, to actuate those keys. Why do you have to stretch so far to get to Q, W, E, and R? Why are they so far offset? Well, of course, this is not a problem on a keyboard like the Moonlander or the Ergodox because A, S, D, F, Q, W, E, R are exactly on top of each other. And that really is the advantage of an ortholinear or a columnar layout is the fact that it's less fatigue, less stress for you having to reach certain keys. So that really in itself is another big selling point for these kinds of split keyboards and these ortholinear keyboards. Now one aspect of these keyboards that initially when I purchased them I didn't know I'd like but I've grown to love and that's the thumb clusters. If I go back to that picture of the Ergodox, the Ergodox has six keys on each thumb cluster. So each thumb has six keys that they can actuate. On the Moonlander, slightly different. They've reduced the number of keys on the thumb cluster from six to four. And for me, that's a minor difference because honestly, I've got small hands and I never could actually use all six keys on the ergo docks especially that one right there and that corner right there uh, it would require me to adjust my hands in a weird way to reach that key anyway so i never really use that key or i would assign it uh, a key that i never typically use like the print screen key or the insert key you know some random key on a keyboard that you probably hit three times a year, right? I would always assign that to something weird like that. But I never really used that key anyway. So for me, the Moonlander only having four keys and the four keys actually being slightly uh, bigger rather than on the Ergo Docs where you have two big keys and then four smaller keys. I, I, I think I like the, the Moonlander's uh, thumb cluster a little better. But again, that's for me with my hands. For those of you with bigger hands, you may enjoy the fact that you've got more keys on the thumb clusters with the Ergo Docs. One of the things I noticed right away when I first started using the Ergodox was I had been typing wrong all of my life. If I switch over to the screen here, and this is the Moonlander in front of me, but the Ergodox was the first keyboard I bought, but they have similar thumb clusters. And, you know, I'm sitting on the home row and I've got thumbs that are in use that I can just hit keys with, right? And on a standard keyboard, I, I realized I had never actually used one of my thumbs. I'd always use the thumb on my left hand, never the thumb on my right hand. And that thumb, all it did was hit the space bar. The other thumb just never did anything. So I had one finger on one hand that never actually did anything while I was typing. It was just a wasted digit, right? <laughs> That's no longer the case. By switching to these kinds of keyboards with these thumb clusters, I'm actually forced to do something with all 10 fingers now, where before, again, I, I was just kind of wasting one thumb. Another huge advantage of these keyboards are the fact that they're mechanical keyboards. And, and for those of you that haven't typed on a mechanical keyboard, I, I know many of you guys have never ventured into mechanical keyboards. It seems like it's scary or it's kind of nerdy. In many cases, the keyboards themselves are expensive. And to be honest, the Moonlander and the Ergo Docs are both very expensive mechanical keyboards. I get that. But once you start using them, you realize they're so much better than your traditional keyboards. Your traditional standard keyboard, you know, you press the keys and they're squishy, they're spongy. You know, sometimes you have to guess, did I press the key? Did I not press the key? On a mechanical keyboard, each key press is distinct and tactile. And you've got many different switches from many different manufacturers that you can swap out. Some switches take more pressure to actuate than others. So if you're a really heavy typer, you know, you may want a different kind of switch than somebody that's a really light typer. Now, you know, some switches also make a louder tactile noise than others. So some people like the really loud clicky switches. Some people want silent switches. And again, it's going to depend on what kind of environment you're working in. If you or uh, mainly typing at home in a bedroom with your spouse, you probably don't want the really loud clicky switches. You probably want silent switches. But some people, if they're alone in an office like I am, I like having some click. I don't like the really loud click, but I like a little click because again, I want that, that distinct tactile noise that kind of reaffirms, yes, I actually did press that key. And since I mentioned changing out key switches, I should mention that on many brands of mechanical keyboards, 
changing the key switches is a lot of work. On some brands, changing the key switches actually involves soldering because the switches themselves are soldered to the board, which means if you have to change switches, you have to desolder and then resolder these new key switches that you put in place. And not everybody has a soldering iron. Not everybody knows how to do that kind of work. And sometimes doing that kind of work on your mechanical keyboard will actually void the warranty. That's not the case on the ZSA keyboards because on both the Ergo Docks and the Moonlander, the switches, they're not soldered in place. They're just popped in place. There's a little tool, almost like a little tweezer tool that you can get in there, pop the keycap out. It just pops out, you know, very easy. And then you put the new one in place and just press it in place and it's very easy to swap out switches. They're hot swappable, right? You can do this again in, in seconds if you're just changing one switch, even if you're changing the whole keyboard. I mean, you're talking about maybe a five minute process of swapping out all the switches on the keyboard. Now, a neat little bonus feature of both the Ergo Docks and the Moonlander is the fact that both of them have these tilt arms, these little arms that you can adjust to change the tilt. And let me show you on the... Ergo docks here. The Ergo docks has uh, two tilt arms on the inside, uh, nothing on the outside. On the Moonlander, you have two tilt arms on the back. And uh, you also have adjustable thumb cluster keys as far as they have some slight adjustment. There's a uh, bolt here that you can adjust the thumb clusters on the Moonlander, where the Ergo docks, the thumb clusters are part of the board and there's no hinge or anything. They, they can't move. Now, I actually, uh, I'll call this like a bonus feature, the tilting feature of these keyboards, because I, I don't think most people will ever use them. Most people have never tilted a keyboard ever in their life, right? They just sit it flat on the desk. And that's what most people are going to do with both the Ergo Docs and the Moonlander anyway. Again, it's just a, a bonus feature there for those that want to play with it. Another nice bonus feature for both these keyboards is the wrist rests. Now, the earlier keyboard is the Ergo Docs. And initially, the Ergo Docs did not come with like a built-in wrist rest. You see, there's no wrist rest attached to the keyboard. What they did was they sold you these extra... Uh, rubber wrist rest that actually sit in front of the keyboard. So, you know, it just sits right there in front of you on, on the uh, desk, basically. And these rubber wrist pads, they're heavy and, you know, they're actually really comfortable. I actually really like the rubber wrist rests on the Ergo Docs. They're very comfortable. One downside, though, they attract a lot of dirt and a lot of crud. And they're kind of tough to clean because rubber just doesn't wipe up that fast and easy. Sometimes you have to scrub it and sometimes you can actually discolor the rubber and, and you can nick the rubber and you cause abrasions in it. And one of the big advantages of the Moonlander was the Moonlander has these built-in wrist rests. If I show you my desk on the black one, you see it's just hinged and it's just, you can fold it away if you don't want to use it or fold it out if you want to use it, but it's smooth plastic. It's the same plastic or polymer that's part of the Moonlander chassis anyway. And because it's so smooth and because it's plastic and not rubber, I can just take a wet paper towel and just wipe that thing one time and it's spotless. But also because it's plastic and it's smooth, I never really noticed this, uh, the wrist rest on the Moonlanders really attracting a lot of dirt and crud the way those rubber pads on the Ergo Docks really, it's like a dirt magnet. Another cool bonus feature of both these keyboards is the LED lighting. You guys, I'm sure have noticed the LED lighting on my Moonlander because it's plugged in. I'm currently using it. This is again, the keyboard I typically use here at the office. I don't have the Ergo Docks plugged in, but the Ergo Docks has the exact same LED backlighting. A lot of cool features. I can change the backlighting. I can actually change the uh, colors and the style. And uh, if I want to, you know, adjust, you know, how it lights up and, and different things, I can do that as well. So a really cool little feature. Again, this is more, I would say, LED lighting. I know I, I'm, I'm going to stereotype people, but this is for the young gamer kind of crowd. I actually don't really care about the LED lighting. It's just a nice bonus feature for me because oftentimes if I'm in a well-lit room like this office, you know, if I have the overhead fluorescent lights in this office on, like if I'm not recording, I just have the standard lights on. It's really bright in this room. And honestly, I'm never going to notice LED lights going on on my keyboard because it's so bright in the room. These aren't bright enough to actually, you know, get me to notice them. But when I have the lights a little bit dimmer, a little bit lower, 
Like right now, I don't have any of the overhead fluorescents on. I just have a couple of studio lamps here spotlighting me to record. So really, the lighting in this room, you probably don't notice it on camera, but it's actually quite low right now. And because of the lower lighting, I can actually you know, see the, the backlighting on these LED keyboards. And honestly, they are a nice little accent. Now, a really cool feature of these keyboards are the multiple layers that are available on the keyboard. If I switch back over, you know, there's not a lot of keys on the Moonlander. Not a lot of keys on the Ergodox either. If I show you, you know, the, uh, the Ergodox here, where's the numpad, right? Where's the function keys? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of keys missing where if I go to like a, a standard uh, 110 keyboard here, you know, you don't have any of this stuff that's at the top. You don't have all these function keys, uh, F1 through 12. Uh, you don't have a lot of these extra keys as well. And you don't have the numpad at all on either the Moonlander or the Ergodox. Or do you? Yes, they are there. They're just on a different layer. What it is, is if, you know, I've got one through zero, you know, standard numbers on the, the Moonlander here and the Ergodox both work the same way. I have a key that if I hold it down, switches me to a second layer. And if I hold it down and hit one, instead of one being the numeral, it will be F1. You see the blue LED light? That's letting me know I just switched from layer zero to layer one. So that's that's all that is doing. So if I hit that key and hold it down and hit two on the keyboard, I'm hitting F2 instead of just two, the numeral. So basically think of uh, that second layer as being a whole new keyboard. You know, everything that you see here is just alphanumeric, the keys themselves. And then if I hold that key or on the other end, that key, and it also switches me to that second layer. Now I have a whole new set of keys. I have those function keys. I also have a lot of the uh, programmer friendly symbols, such as your brackets, braces, the tilde, the grove, you know, th those kind of weird symbols. You don't use that often, but you need them occasionally and you don't have keys for them you know, in that default layer. The other thing, that numpad, well, I just hold that and then U, I, O, J, K, L, M, and then uh, greater than, less than, these nine keys here, that's actually my numpad when I'm in that second layer. If I release it, then they just become the letters themselves. By default, on both the Moonlander and the Ergodox, you actually have three layers. And what's on the third layer? Well, if I hit that key, I'll be on the third layer. The third layer, I actually don't use that often. It's got some keys to uh, adjust the lighting and things for us, the LED lighting. It also has keys for, instead of using a mouse, I can use the keyboard to actually move the cursor on the screen. Essentially, if you didn't have a mouse plugged in, you could switch to this third layer on the Moonlander and the Ergodox and use your keyboard as a mouse. Another really cool thing is that you have dual function keys on the, the Moonlander and the Ergodox Easy. What is a dual function key? Well, let me go back to a standard keyboard. Let's talk about the control key, because the control key is, for me, one of the things that caused me the most pain as far as hand pain and wrist pain as using a, a keyboard is because... That's a long stretch for me. Again, I don't have very big hands and I'm stretching all the time for this control key because I use programs that use the control key a lot. Uh, uh, Emacs, I'm looking at you. Anyway, that is a big stretch for that pinky to get to that control key all the time. Well, in the ZSA keyboards, what the control key is, is actually the Z key. In, at least in my layout. So I don't have to stretch at all. All I do is hold the Z key and if I hold it instead of just tap it, it becomes the control key. So if I just tap it, that's just typing Z on the keyboard. I actually just changed layouts on the screen <laughs> because I'm in OBS, Z switches to a different layout. But if I actually held it, it becomes the control key. So if I hold Z and then press something else, you know, that's the same as doing control and then plus that key. And again, for ergonomics, that is an absolute game changer because now instead of my pinky having to stretch all the way over here to hit the control key, which I use all the time, again, in programs like Emacs, for example, now all I have to do is just stretch to the Z key, which is right under my fingers. I, I don't have to stretch at all. It's just right there. I just hold the Z key, it becomes the control key. And then on the other side of the keyboard, if I held the slash key, that's also my other control key. And that's the same on both the Moonlander and the Ergodox. So I, my two control keys are right here, exactly where my pinky is. I don't have to now stretch on our standard keyboard to get to those way out there. Control key, and you, the same could be done for your alt key, your super key, uh, any of those keys that sometimes require you to do a stretch. 
Another unique aspect of the Moon Lander and the Ergo Docks is they include some keys that are not available on a standard keyboard. So even though, you know, it looks like they're missing a lot of keys, they actually have keys that you don't have on your standard 110 key keyboard. If I go back to this picture of the Ergo Docks, you see in this inner column here, you have three keys. And uh, these typically by default until you change them, unless you change them, are keys hyper and meh. <laughs> yes, that's hyper and then meh. M -E -H. What are the hyper key and the meh key? Uh, meh is uh, super alt plus control. Hyper is super alt control shift. Now, what kind of crazy key binding would you ever use where you needed something to be set to a uh, super alt control shift plus another key? Well, you'd never use that, not on a standard keyboard, but again, you're not limited the way you are on a normal keyboard. So you have these extra modifier keys, these two extra modifier keys that you don't have on your standard keyboard, and that's really great, especially for those of you that use a ton of different key bindings, especially those of you on Linux and you're using tiling window managers. It's very easy to run out of key bindings using your standard modifier key, which is typically either super or alt, and at some point, you, you, you maybe you use both super and alt, and you've run out of keys, key bindings that you can set to those keys. Well, now you have both Hyper and Met available. Now, I mentioned earlier that both the Ergodox and the Moonlander use open source software to flash the firmware. And uh, this open source software is called QMK. It's available over on GitHub. You can go take a look at the source code if you want. But there's a uh, graphical configurator tool on the ZSA website that's really nice. So I'm on the Ergodox page here. And if I go to graphical configurator, um, graphical configurator, try it out. And let this page load. And I'll, I guess instead of taking us directly to the Ergodox configurator, we get a, a screen, which keyboard are we configuring? Moonlander, Ergodox, or the Plank Easy? Let's say we're configuring the Ergodox, and we get a visual representation of a Ergodox keyboard uh, with all the default keys. It'll tell us exactly what the key does, what the key does when it's tapped, what the key does when it's pressed. For example, Z. If I right click, you can see when tapped, it's just a Z. When held, it's left control. Now you can adjust these keys. You can actually change them to anything you can imagine. I would just go over here to modify layout. I get into a, a different kind of mode where we can actually change the keys. Then later you can download this layout. And what it does, it saves a file locally to your system. And then you use a piece of free and open source software called Wally. Wally is actually available in the Arch user repository, I believe. I'm, I'm pretty sure I downloaded it from there. Wally is also available on the ZSA website. It's a graphical program that you just open up and you tell it where the location of that layout you saved to your computer is, and it just flashes the firmware on your keyboard. Super easy. There's also a command line version of Wally, which is typically what I use. I just open a terminal, I type Wally-CLI space, and then the path to that layout file that I saved on my computer. And again, boom, super easy, really easy to change your layouts and, and change layers and, and everything else. And you can change anything you want to change about these keyboards because they're programmable. So the possibilities are endless in what you want to do with these things. And since I mentioned that you can change everything about the keyboard, one of the things is a lot of you guys are probably thinking about eventually switching away from QWERTY to other layouts like Dvorak or Colmac or things like that. And honestly, when you purchase your Ergodox or your Moonlander, that's a perfect time to go ahead and make that switch because honestly, these keyboards are so different than a standard keyboard anyway. Even if you use the QWERTY layout, you're going to have to learn how to type again because of the thumb clusters. It's a little weird. You know, it's going to take you two, three weeks to really get comfortable with this keyboard anyway. So it's a perfect time to go ahead and make that switch from QWERTY to Dvorak or Colmac or whatever it is you're interested in switching over to anyway, because again, you're going to have to learn how to type anyway. You might as well go ahead and, and flash the firmware to that Dvorak layout. You can go ahead and pop the keycaps off and arrange them in the proper Dvorak configuration or Colmac configuration as well. Now, one of my favorite aspects of these keyboards is the fact that these are sustainable keyboards because, you know, too many devices, including keyboards, are built to break. They, they're built basically to become obsolete in a year or two because... This is good for the companies that make these keyboards. It's good for them that their devices break or become obsolete and then they get thrown away and then you, the customer, has to go back and buy the new version of that particular device from that company. It makes them more money. But that's not what ZSA is doing here because ZSA, they're building products to last. The Ergodox and the Moonlander are really 
sturdy product. I mean, when you hold it in your hand, you know these things are built to last. Just handling them, you can tell they're well built. And the fact that the switches and the keycaps, they're all so easily swappable, it means that these things are less likely to break uh, in, a, in a major way as far as they no longer work because if it's just a, a problem with a keycap or a key switch they're hot swappable it means longer lasting life for your keyboards and thus it's just better for the environment and I really appreciate that from a company now one of the questions I've been getting from a lot of you guys is which one do I prefer the Ergo Docs, which I use at home or the Moonlander which I use at the office and this is a tough question because honestly there's not a lot of difference between these two keyboards. Let me quickly highlight uh, some of the differences again. The ErgoDox weighs a little more, if I switch back to this layout. The ErgoDox versus the Moonlander weighs a little more, even though the ErgoDox doesn't come with a built-in wrist pad. Now, if you throw in the really heavy rubber wrist pad, uh, the uh, ErgoDox actually is going to have a, quite a bit more weight than the Moonlander. Because of that, the ErgoDox is not really as portable as the Moonlander. The Moonlander, because it folds away the wrist wrist, it's a little bit smaller than the Ergo Dox keypads. And plus the Moonlander comes with a carrying case that you can quickly fold this thing up, store in a carrying case. And then, you know, if, if it was a situation where you needed a portable keyboard, the Moonlander is probably the best choice to buy. For me, I'm not really moving these keyboards. The Ergo Dox stays at home. The Moonlander stays here. So it's not a big deal for me. The Ergo Dox, I mentioned, has more thumb clusters as far as uh, keys on the thumb cluster. Six keys on each thumb cluster where the Moonlander only has four keys. Again, for me, that's not a big deal it doesn't make much of a difference for for me typing for some of you it may make a big deal so that may uh may that might be a deciding factor in your choice as far as which one to buy the moon lander also has uh, smaller keys on the thumb clusters slightly smaller keys compared to the keys the big keys on the ergo dogs also the uh keys on the outside uh, columns here the very far outside these are bigger keys on the ergo dogs compared to those same keys on the Moonlander. You can see on the Moonlander, they're just your standard keycaps, standard size keycaps, where they're double sized keycaps on the Ergo Docs. And of course, that makes the Moonlander again a little smaller than the Ergo Docs. So overall, I mean, which one do I like more? Uh, honestly, I like both of them equally, even though I just highlighted a bunch of differences. The differences really don't make a difference because the main selling points for these keyboards, again, if, if I was talking about the big selling points, is the split key design, the ortholinear design, the thumb clusters, the fact that they're mechanical keyboards, and really both the ErgoDox and the Moonlander all have that, right? It's the minor differences are really just minor differences. And to be honest, I really don't care, <laughs> you know, that one has four keys on the thumb cluster and one has six. It really doesn't affect me either anyway. So I I have no problems with the fact that I purchased a Ergodox and a Moonlander. And I, I I would be happy with either one. If I could only have one keyboard and you gave me either one of these keyboards, I would be absolutely thrilled. And again, I don't think I'll ever buy a standard keyboard again because I could never be happy. I could never use such a limiting keyboard having used the split key design of the Ergodox and the Moonlander. And again, I've been using them now for a little over two and a half years. So I, it's ingrained in my brain now, right? It's all muscle memory now and using a standard 110 key keyboard. I can't do it. Now, if I had to come up with one negative for these keyboards, and, and this is really being nitpicky, but if there was one negative with both the Ergodox and the Moonlander is the fact that they are expensive. These are not cheap keyboards. You're going to spend about $350 to $400 US for these keyboards. And that's not cheap. These are not cheap devices. But in my opinion, you do get what you pay for. I can't recommend these keyboards highly enough. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I'm talking about Gabe, James Mitchell, Paul, Scott West, Akami, Allen, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Dayoka, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Lee, Max, and Michael, Mike, Nitrix, Alexander, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Raver, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this episode. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. I can't call out all their names because this list is incredibly long. It's an ever-growing list of names. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm just sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to help support me, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.
And yes, I love the Kensington trackball as well. 